Hey guys, every year I bring in new products. Uh, I think the past couple years I brought in two or three new spreaders every year and reviewed them for you. This year we're going to be focusing on a lot of lighter material, so I want larger hopper spreaders. So I'm going to show you three large hopper spreaders. I'll go over my new top favorite, which I absolutely love, and it's sort of a mid-range price. Now these large capacity spreaders, typically they start about 170 bucks and they go up above 600 bucks. And I wanted something more in the middle, more in line with the average homeowner that had a decent sized yard, but was going to start doing a lot of this light, airy stuff. The spreader that I choose, the instructions on their spreaders and their assembly is, is a pain in the butt if you haven't visually seen it. Once you've visually seen it, it's easy. So my son and I will do the assembly for you and put it very chopped up after this video. Make sense? Both of these spreaders, I think I'm going what? On my uh, third year with them? And I'll explain the difference between these two. And then this is my new pick. I am really liking this spreader. Okay. So let's start with the cheaper one. This is an Agrifab decent spreader. And this is why I've recommended in this pass. If you want a real big high capacity spreader for the price, comparatively quality wise, I think this is a real good unit. I think this runs now about $170. You have 13 inch wheels, pneumatic wheels, uh, which these all do, uh, gearbox, spreader, I mean the usual stuff. The actual tubing on this is okay. It is not as sturdy as the other two. The only thing, I was talking to my son about this while he was using this, and the only thing he doesn't like about this control is that um, with this control, if you're not careful, you've got to pull it back all the way. It gets stuck a lot of times, number one. Number two, when you go to shut it off, if you don't hit that exactly in here, your stuff will keep coming out. But overall, for the money, good quality spreader. Now let's go to the king daddy of spreaders. <laughs> this is uh, the Anderson's LCO 1000 this is what you'll see on golf courses and this is what you'll see with people that do it for a living it's an all stainless steel frame really wide pneumatic tires um just a <laughs> a really nice comfortable ride and throw to it you have a different type of adjustment here so you make your adjustment here and then you just have an on off here again we've put a ton of hours on both of these this one's starting to sound, sound a little grindy now. <laughs> this one is not. This one has held up. So both of these have received a bunch of abuse. Now let's go to my new favorite. And why is it my new favorite? Because it's sort of in between these two. A lot of people want a bigger spreader with good quality, but they don't want to pay $600 for a spreader. This one has the 13-inch pneumatic tires. They're actually a better tire than this. Um, you can see how this kind of wobbles and... Um, this one is actually a better tire. The gear system I like better. You can actually access because they put screws on this gearbox so you can access it. Overall construction, you have a single frame, um, single frame metal right in here. This is all single frame going down. Really nice construction. 100% metal control system here, which is nice. All metal goes down here and then this is your control but we like the simplicity of it's on or it's off it's on or it's off it's very simple i do like the fact that this one has a plastic screen we call them clump screens uh, a lot of your spreaders have metal screens and they have a tendency to cut your hands and they rust a little bit uh, adjustment is great on it this does this does not have a side throw. I don't believe that this has a side throw limiter on it. This one, if you want a side throw limiter to only discharge off one side, you have to buy the side, I believe. But this one has a little system on it that you just reach up under here, reach up under here, and you pull this tab like that. And when you open it, 
Now what happens is, is only one hole is open. So now you're only going to be throwing out one side. When you're done on the side, you reach under here, push down, and pull it back, and all three holes open. Uh, the only improvement I can absolutely see on this is better install, better assembly instructions. And I wish that they would have that tab maybe come out a little bit more and even maybe put a color on it. That was the only improvement I would make on this unit. Big soft handles. I love these handles. These handles, not so much. We're gonna be putting out a lot of light materials this year and that's why we need the bigger capacity hopper. You can see how big they are. I mean, this thing is 15 gallons. It's a monster, uh, but it's not super heavy. It's actually, I have to look at the weights. It's, that's actually lighter than these two. So, but uh, man, I love that thing. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll go ahead and at this video and at the end, I'll go ahead and do show you how to assemble it. Let me pop in here real quick and just go over the specs because I forgot to do that earlier in the video. Um, one of the big things I like about the spreader is I like to hang my spreaders up. So I have to reach like over a lawnmower and hang it up in my shed. And it's really hard to do with the other two. This one, it's actually easier because of the weight and because of the footprint size. Uh, the Agrifab weighs 37 pounds. The LCO weighs 41 pounds. It's pretty heavy, it's stainless steel frame. But this one, the new Earth, Earthway, uh, the Pro model series was 29 pounds. So it is significantly lighter. The, the hopper rated weight is 100 pounds. The frame weighted weight is 185. So what they're saying is you can put up to 100 pounds of material in this, no problem. Cost wise, uh, the Agrifab runs to your door price. These are all to your door prices. We're running about $175. The uh, LCO, probably 580, high fives, getting close to 600 bucks. This one will run you, including everything to your door, is right about 300 bucks. So that's the variance on the three of them. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do, these instructions are always never great and it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to install these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you some tips. You'll miss the first step, which is, let me see this part. This part right here, which is the main handle. So this is your main handle. It need turn this on the side and then it takes the, it takes the one quarter 20 screws, pan heads, and these are the 120 pan heads. So you gotta go look at the sheet. So that's the first step. He was here trying to put it together without doing this first and you can't do that. So put that bar on the header box first. Okay, so step number two is you put this rod through here and then you slide this on here and that's your gearbox assembly. That's step number two. It says front right here. That goes on like that. Step number four, attach these, right? Next step number four is attach these. Frame braces and there are numbers on them and they need to what? Face what? They need to go towards the gearbox. So the numbers go towards numbers the gearbox. Go towards this. And you install that with a quarter 20 inch and a half. If you measure that, it's an inch and a half. It's a quarter 20 bolt. Frame brace on. Numbers Into in. And then that rod brace. is that rod is already threaded? Yeah. Okay. And that goes in like that. Both sides. These little rods here, they go to the inside here and then the outside here. Insert this drive axle into here. Then there's a then there's a little notch right here and there's a little notch right here. Slide this over. Oh, that goes into the notch just like this. There you go. And the flat side will be here and the curved side is on the inside. Okay, once you get to this step, you get everything on there. Now the point is where you go and tighten all your nuts and bolts. Okay, so here's one of the points that will drive you crazy if you're not watching this video. You have what they call a bushing or a bearing, and it slides into here. The next thing you need to understand is that this piece actually will slide inside here. That's where this piece goes. They don't make that clear. So there are two. The one with the little groove goes inside here. The other one slides inside there. So here's another note that might confuse you. They say you use a two inch cotter pin. Well, the two inch cotter pin 
is actually two and three quarters. They say use a one inch, which is actually one and a half. Now, here's the difference. This is the drive wheel. Both the wheels are exactly the same, but the drive wheel has a cotter pin and hole and it locks, it goes through the wheel and the axle. So when you put this on, this wheel is gonna lock into the axle and actually turn the unit. The other cotter pin is outside and it's the coast wheel. So the coast wheel, the cotter pin goes on the outside, the drive wheel, the cotter pin locks the axle in place and that's why it's bigger and thicker. When you're putting in your cotter pins, let me make a recommendation, they're really hard to bend. So you're gonna take the longer piece of your cotter pin, use a pair of vice grips, cause you need a lot of power. Put it onto here and then start to bend it. But you gotta get it started usually with a pair of vice grips is what I've found. Just like that. So that makes your life easier. If you try and do this with pliers, they're gonna snap and you're gonna hurt your fingers. Okay, little note here, um, you're putting putting these bolts through here and there's a little square space and there's a little square spacer here the spacer goes into the empty slot where there's not a actual piece of handle and the bolt goes through here and the attachment hand me that little gear thing there and you can see how the handles sort of slope down well you, this goes here on the left on the left side of the handle like that That'll drive you absolutely crazy. So I want you to see what we've got going on here. This is the way that this part goes into here. So it slides in, it slides in, you slide it in and you turn it so it looks like that. Then it comes up to here and then that little piece, that the longer piece right here, fits into this bracket like this. Now, you'll notice that on this bracket, how I have it set up, I want you to pay special attention to this. Okay, so you can see how I have this bracket set up. It's on the left side. This thing is facing outward towards me. And this little bracket is facing backwards. Now, important note, you're gonna put, you're gonna put one of these bolts on here first okay so put one of these bolts on here first then what you're going to do is put it through then you're going to put the other bolt on now you'll notice that we've got one of these on here just to hold it in place so let me just give you a full better angle look view of this so the really long piece here goes into this. The shorter piece goes into here. Put it in and you turn it. It comes up under this brace. It goes into this bracket just like this. And you'll notice that it's not like this. It's actually like this. Okay, so the next thing we did is we installed just there's two bolts here and here. The threads go on the inside, and here is your plastic clump guard, and it just slides right under there. There's a little finger hole here. You take it out, just like that. Now, when you tune this thing, <coughs> you'll do your fine tune adjustments here. So what I want to do is when this thing is, bam, all the way down, these slots should be fully closed. Okay, so last little note. On those two little adjustment nuts, once you go down on it and you see it's fully closed, you come up and you see it's fully open, lock those nuts in place. And here's what I do. Uh, you can either get some lock washers and put lock washers, but then you gotta sort of disassemble the thing again. <laughs> so, but I put a couple drops just around those two bolts with E6000. If you don't have any E6000, get it. It'll change your life, trust me. <laughs> this is the greatest stuff in the world. It's a um, it's a slow to harden sort of glue, and once it hardens, it turns into sort of like a hard plastic. You can, it's hard to pry off, but it's not flexible once it dries. 
I love this stuff. Um, so if you have a bolt that you want to sort of semi-permanently attach to something, you can put some of this on it. The next thing is, is um, lubrication of these spreaders. Uh, some of these real high-end spreaders have lube joints where you can put grease. The problem with grease that I've found is that you've got real fine dust and particles and sort of like sand. And anytime you introduce that into a gear system where it's not completely closed, you're going to have problems. So um, all you have to do is just, I think, just on the wheel, shoot some WD-40 onto the little wheel bearing areas. Or um, sometimes I'll even use, this is a fishing, fishing reel, uh, reel oil. It has a little, oh, almost like a needle on the end of it. Um, and you can really get in there and sort of just shoot, but you want to use a light oil on those wheels so it doesn't grab the actual thing, actual dirt. Anyways, guys, that video will save your life, trust me. <laughs> it's the only complaint that people have about these series of spreaders is the instructions. You have to visually see it. You'll love it. It's a great spreader. I'll talk to you later. Doc.